Welcome to NHL Playoff Imperialism. How it works is I spin a wheel to select a team. After selecting a team, I'll spin a directional arrow to find out which way we're going. If the arrow sends us towards an unoccupied state or province, then said team will claim said state or province. If it sends us towards an occupied state or province, then the two teams will match up in a seven game series to see who comes out on top and claims all the land. I've also made one other change, which is after a team attacks, they will be removed from the wheel until the following round, which means every team has to attack once before one team can attack twice. Now we have an understanding for how the game works, let's get right into it. Before that though, I'm trying to hit 40,000 subs by the end of the month, and if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, it only takes a second, and it helps more than you can imagine. So here's what the Imperialism map's looking like, and honestly, any team can come out on top. As we saw in my last video where I put 32 teams in the playoffs, anything can happen. Like literally anything. This is the NHL 23 simulation. I'm hoping we're going to see some crazy upsets here. The Chicago Blackhawks are going to be up first, and they're going to be taking their towns northwest. And with them heading northwest, they're just going to be claiming a free state over St. Louis. Sticking in the central division the dallas stars are up next and they're going to be taking their talents northwest as well that's just going to allow them to claim a free state as well heading up to canada we got the vancouver canucks and with them heading south we already know we got a matchup they're taking on the seattle kraken and this matchup is going to allow one team to cross the border seattle's taking game one in a 4-1 win while vancouver's bouncing back in game two with the help of two jt miller goals to even the series in game three we're going to be headed to overtime as vancouver and seattle are exchanging goals in overtime Manny Beniers is going to pick up the puck along the boards he's going to dish that over to tovan and he's going to be finishing this one to give seattle the lead in the series once again and seattle's not going to look back after that they're going to shut the vancouver canucks out in game four and now vancouver's on the brink of elimination game five wouldn't be the end of this series though because vancouver's pot in two in the third period and now we're head to overtime with vancouver on the power play and double overtime brock Besser's going to be picking up his own rebound he's going to be beating martin jones here and now we're head to game six and in game six vancouver's keeping this interesting as they're winning three to one and now we got ourselves a game seven and what's better than the game seven overtime in game seven halfway through the extra frame the puck's going to be loose in front of demko bjork strand's going to pick it up and with a nice backhand move he's going to bury this one for the overtime winner and he's going to single-handedly eliminate the vancouver canucks so with that seattle crack and win they're going to be the first american team to enter canada i saw all the comments on the last video where i said columbus is the first canadian team to enter canada that was a very rare stick on the ice l right there we continue to stick in the western conference with the minnesota wild being up next and with them heading northeast they're going to be entering ottawa territory it looks like this matchup's going to start where we just left off as we're headed to overtime with eight minutes left in overtime Derek brassard's going to drive right to the slot He's somehow going to be able to get past the defender here, and then he's going to get a shot off, which is beaten Mark Andre Fleury, which is going to give Ottawa game one. And then Ottawa's doubling down on that in game two, as they're going to be taking this one three to two. Minnesota's going to be able to avoid the 3 0 deficit with six goals in game three, and then a massive goal from Ryan Reeves in game four is evening this series up. Game five is going to be a low scoring one, but we're head to overtime once again. A little over five minutes into overtime, Goudreau's getting the feed, and he's getting a shot off. Matthew Boldy's going to deflect this one to the net, and now Minnesota's one game away from the next round. But the Senators aren't going to allow them to advance just yet, as they're going to be scoring five in game six. And now we got ourselves another game seven. And in game seven, Derek Broussard is going to be the hero once again. He's going to be potting two goals, which includes the game winner. And just like that, the Ottawa Senators are eliminating the Minnesota Wild. And with Ottawa taking down Minnesota, they're the first Canadian team to enter the United States. I got both of them right, guys. Two for two. I think you got to subscribe because of that. Or at least leave a like. Just do something. Show support by any means possible. We're finally headed over to the Eastern Conference and we got the Tampa Bay Lightning. And with them heading south, we already know what the matchup's going to be. It's Tampa versus Florida. Florida's going to come out flying in game one as they're taking a 5 0 lead and they're not turning turning back from that so they got game one but in game two the lightning and panthers are going to exchange goals so we're headed to overtime some elite passing from tampa is going to have Corey perry wide open in front of the net he's going to bury this one and with tampa evening the series they're not looking back after that overtime win tampa's not looking back they're going to steal game three three to one and then they're taking game four three to two with the help of a clorn goal with only 11 seconds left in the game in game five the tampa bay lightning just can't be stopped they're scoring three unanswered and they're eliminating the florida panthers the panthers continue to get screwed in imperialism because no matter what they basically always have to take Tampa on the first round. The only way they wouldn't is Tampa would have to get eliminated first. And Tampa's always making those late pushes. Heading back over to the Central Division, the Colorado Avalanche are up next, and they're going to be taking their town southeast. But that's not leading them into a matchup, they're just going to be claiming a free state. It's time to get another Canadian team in the mix, and the Toronto Maple Leafs are up next. They're going to be taking their town slightly southwest, so they got the Detroit Red Wings to take on. The Leafs and Red Wings are going to be exchanging goals the entire way, but Toronto's going to come out on top in a 3-2 win. In Game 2, Matthews is going to pot two goals, and that's going to lead Toronto to a 5-1 win. And in Game 3, they're putting Detroit on the brink of elimination. I think it's safe to say Detroit's days are numbered. And in game four, that's exactly what's happening. They're going to be getting swept in Toronto. They're surviving another day. The move from Toronto might not be claiming a lot of land, but it's definitely a start for this team. The New York Islanders are our first team from the Metro Division, and they're going to be taking their towns east. And by heading east, they're just going to be claiming a free state. The Seattle Kraken are ready to go on the attack, and now they're heading northeast. So that's going to have them matching up against the Calgary Flames. It wouldn't take long for this series to get interesting as we're headed to overtime in game one. And with the Seattle Kraken on the power play in game one, they're not scoring. Power to Foley is, he's going to be bearing the shorthanded 
left-handed winner, and he's given Calgary a 1-0 series lead. But that series lead isn't going to be lasting long as Seattle is responding in Game 2. In Game 3, though, Calgary would be shutting out the Seattle crack, and they've taken the lead once again, and they're not looking back after that. Six goals in Game 4 is going to put Seattle on the brink of elimination. And in Game 5, everything's falling apart for Seattle. They might have had a 2-0 lead heading into the third period, but that just wasn't enough. Calgary's going to be potting four, and now they're eliminating the Seattle Kraken. That was a big win for Calgary. Although they're not claiming a ton of land, they did technically get two territories, one being Seattle's and the one being Vancouver's, but Vancouver's was already claimed by Seattle. You guys know what I mean. The Columbus Blue Jackets are ready to get in the mix, and they're going to be taking their town slightly southwest, but southwest is just going to have them claiming a free state. Sticking in the Eastern Conference, we got the New York Rangers up next, and they're heading north. And for this team heading north, we're going to see a fantastic matchup as the New York Rangers is going to be taking on the Toronto Maple Leafs. A big goal from Lafreniere early in the first period is going to be helping the Rangers take game one. But in game two, we're going back and forth the entire way, and now we're headed to overtime. So we're halfway through the extra frame, and this is the goal that's being scored. Cal Yarko is going to get a backhander off from behind the net, and that's ending up in the back of the net. Nah, that's a greasy goal to tie the series on, but hey, they'll take it. The Leafs wouldn't be able to build on that momentum, however, as the Benajad's pot in two, and he's given the Rangers a 2-1 series lead, and the Rangers aren't going to look back after that. Two goals from Kane's giving them a 3-1 series lead, and then in game five, two goals from Panarin is going to be sending the Leafs home. With the Leafs being upset early in Imperialism once again, the question could be asked, is this team ever going to win a playoff series? Stick on the ice prediction right here, Tampa Bay in seven. I'm never going to bet against this Tampa team until somebody can prove me wrong. Now granted, I guess the Colorado Avalanche proved me wrong last season, but it's the Tampa Bay Lightning. Look what they've done over the past three seasons. Why would you bet against them? After watching a Canadian team fall, it's time for another one to get in the action as we got the Winnipeg Jets up next. Winnipeg's going to be taking their town southwest, but that's not meaning too much as they're just going to be claiming a free state. Sticking in Canada, the Ottawa Senators are up next and they're going to be heading directly east. And with them heading directly east, they got a matchup with another Canadian team in the Montreal Canadiens. Derek Broussard continues to prove he's one of the greatest playoff performers of all time as he's going to be helping Ottawa take game one. In game two, Cam Talbot continues to stand on his head as he's helping Ottawa steal another game away from Montreal. However, the goaltending went out the window in game three because Cam Talbot allowed five goals in the first period. It's pretty tough to come back from that one. And Montreal's offense would continue into game four as they're potting four and now the series is evened up. Ottawa is able to respond in game five and they're pushing Montreal to the brink of elimination, but the Canadians aren't going to go down that easy. They're going to be scoring three goals in the third period, and now we're headed to another game seven. But in game seven, it looks like Montreal's offense is going to slow up a bit while Cam Talbot stands on his head as the Ottawa Senators are going to be winning another matchup. With that win over the Montreal Canadiens, they now control the most land in the entire game. But to be honest, as long as you beat Montreal, you're probably going to own the most. Heading back over to the Western Conference, the Nashville Predators are up next, and they're going to be heading directly east. So that means they got a matchup against the Carolina Hurricanes. To open the series up between these two teams, you're going to be heading to overtime in game one. And it wouldn't take long before we found a winner. Ajo's dishing it over to Session. Off. He's going to be beating Soros and Carolina's taking game one. But what's better than just one overtime game? Two overtime games. And we're heading back to OT in game two. This time it would take a bit longer to score. We're in double overtime, but we're early into the extra frame. Seshnikov to Aho, Aho over to Pacioretty, and Carolina, they're taking two back to back overtime games. Game three would need overtime as Carolina's scoring four, and now Nashville's on the brink of getting swept. Before they get swept, though, we need one more overtime game. This time Carolina decided to switch up the overtime winner. It's going to go from Seshnikov to Aho instead of Aho to Seshnikov. Carolina is still winning. They're still completing the series, but they decide to change it up a bit. And without home stance from the Carolina Hurricanes, they're taking over Nashville territory. Sticking in the Metro Division, the Washington Capitals are up next, and they're going to be heading southeast. This wouldn't mean much for them, though, because they're just claiming a small free state. Sticking in the same area, we got the Buffalo Sabres up next, and they're going to be taking their town southeast. And southeast is going to bring us a matchup as they're going to be taking on the Philadelphia Flyers. It should be no surprise, but the Buffalo Sabres are going to be taking game one, four to one. But in game two, Philly's going to keep this series interesting as we're headed to overtime. In overtime, with Philly on the power play, Sean Lawton's going to give the puck over to JVR. He's beating Craig Anderson on the shot and he's going to even this series up. Buffalo would retake the series lead in game three with a 3-1 win and then they continue to roll, taking game four, five to three. The Flyers would be able to survive another day with a 4-2 win in game five and in game six, they're surprising me with the help of two Joel Farabee goals, they're going to be pushing Buffalo to a game seven. It's only fitting that since we haven't had a game seven in a while, we make it interesting, so we're going to be headed to overtime. And here we are in double overtime after being down 3-1 in the series, Philly's going to fight all the way back and they're completing the massive up upset over the Buffalo Sabres, taking them down in seven games. Nah, the fact that this team just blew a 3-1 series lead is crazy. That's a tough look for you guys, what can I say? And to Philly of all teams? Hate to see it, you really do. After watching that disappointing loss, there's only one other thing we can do. Watch another team get disappointed, and it's probably going to be the Vegas Golden Knights, because for some reason, they do not perform well in these videos. Vegas is going to be taking their town southwest, so that means they're going to have to match up against the Los Angeles Kings. And the 
Kings aren't going to be messing around. They're going to be shutting the Vegas Golden Knights out in game one. But in game two, luckily, Vegas is going to be able to respond and they're evening the series up. After having a 2 0 lead early in the game, that's not going to be enough. The Kings are going to be scoring three unanswered and now they're taking the lead in the series. And in game four, with the teams exchanging goals throughout the entire way, we're going to be headed to overtime. Halfway into the extra period, Villardi is going to be picking the puck away from William Carlson. He's going to give himself enough space and he's ripping this one past Robin Leonard to put Vegas on the brink of elimination. Jack Eichel would do absolutely everything he could to keep Vegas in this series, but he's only able to pot two, which means we're headed to overtime. So here we are in overtime, six minutes left, and the Kings are on a three on five. Vegas just kept taking penalty after penalty after penalty. Like, I'm not kidding. This team has been on the power play for like five minutes straight. The second one penalty ends, Vegas just takes another one immediately. Vegas, I can't even say you got screwed. You just kept taking penalty after penalty. That's on you. Sticking in the Western Conference, the Arizona Coyotes are up next, and they're going to be heading southeast. And southeast is going to lead into a matchup for them as they got to take on the Dallas Stars. Arizona would take the lead late in the game, but Jason Robertson, he's going to be evening this one up with less than four minutes left to send it to overtime. Rupe Hintz is going to be the hero in overtime with a nice windmill deke here. He's going to break past the defenseman, and he's going to be beating the goaltender here to give Dallas game one. But as we know, this Arizona Coyotes team is elite. When it comes to the playoffs, they're a different breed. They're going to be taking game two to even this series. But in game three, Dallas is going to be coming out on top, and they've got themselves a 2-1 series lead. The Dallas Stars aren't going to look back after that, though. Johnson's going to be picking up the hat trick to put Arizona on the brink of elimination, and then in game five, Arizona's getting eliminated. So I guess me calling this team a different breed in the playoffs did not age well whatsoever. Like literally the second I said that, they lost three straight games. That's a tough look. Sticking around the same area, we got the Anaheim Ducks up next, and they're going to be taking their talents northeast. And through them heading northeast, they're going to have to take on the Los Angeles Kings. Mikey Anderson's going to be potting a goal late in the game, which is going to be forcing overtime between the two teams. A little over halfway into double overtime, Vakanen's just going to drive straight to the front of the net, and absolutely no one is picking him up. They're leaving this man wide open. Like, literally, the defense just split for him. I don't even know what's going on here. Luckily, the Kings are able to bounce back in game two, and Drew Doughty's insurance goal is going to come in handy as they're coming out on top three to two. The Kings won't need an insurance goal in game three though they're going to be pot in five and now they're up 2-1 in the series and they're not looking back after that they're taking game four five to one but in game five the ducks aren't done yet as a 4-1 lead is going to be enough to send them to game six and here we are in game six as the anaheim ducks are coming out on top and we got ourselves a game seven and it seems like every time we end up in game seven there's one common factor among all of them overtime they all go to overtime for some reason the anaheim ducks have to thank trevor's egress because he's the reason they win this game he got absolutely lit up bro was skating down the middle of the ice with his head down got absolutely rock somehow they're gonna end up scoring here and vetrano is gonna be the hero now but if you really think of it trevor zegris is the hero bro put his body on the line and he wasn't getting up after that hit he got rocked Heading all the way over to the Eastern Conference, we've got the Pittsburgh Penguins who are taking their town southeast. And they're heading southeast, they're entering Washington territory, so we're going to have a great matchup between Sid the Kid and Alexander Ovechkin. Okay, so maybe we're not going to have a great matchup because they're shutting the Penguins out in game one and they're pot in five. All right then. Washington's offense turns out to just be a bit different. They're scoring seven goals in game two, and then in game three, they're going to continue scoring. They're picking up four, but luckily Pittsburgh's getting six, so they're keeping the series close. Ferravardi is going to be scoring a goal late in the third period, and that's going to end up being the winner. And now Washington is one game away from eliminating the penguins but if it's going to be an elimination game it's got to be headed to overtime and that's exactly what's happening in game five so Sonny Malone's going to get Tristan Jari absolutely lost here as he dishes it to Backstrom on that pass to Backstrom Jari is sliding so far over he's not even close to being in position I don't understand why he slid so far over but no nah, like what were you doing bro with that overtime winner from Washington they're going to be taking over Pittsburgh territory and they're slowly gaining some land all right so who's getting smoked now St. Louis Blues are up next they're heading directly north and we're taking Chicago territory I refuse to believe we're going to lose to the Chicago Blackhawks of all teams. We might be losing game one, five to three, but we want a challenge here. We don't want to just sweep these boys. All right, so we're losing game two, two to one. Ignore the fact that I'm only showing the first period scoring here. These were the only goals scored, but yeah, we're down two nothing now. All right, boys, no more messing around. We're headed to overtime here. We can't fall 3-0 in the series. All right, so um, what's the plan here? We're down 3-0 now. We're going to make a fantastic comeback, right? All right, so you guys might not know, but in the last video, I made fun of the New Jersey Devils for something similar to this happening to them. Obviously, I won't make fun of the St. Louis Blues for doing the exact same thing. I would prefer if we headed southwest because we could have at least taken on the Colorado Avalanche. I'd rather get smoked by the Colorado Avalanche than lose to the Chicago Blackhawks. Actually, not lose to the Chicago Blackhawks. Get swept by them. That's tough. That's real tough. Heading back up to Canada, we got the Edmonton Oilers, and with this team heading south, we already know what the matchup's going to be. They're taking on the 
the Calgary Flames. Calgary is taking game one on the back of 26 saves from Markstrom. In game two, Evander Kane is going to be scoring a goal with 45 seconds left in the game, and we're headed to overtime. On the Edmonton Oilers power play, Evander Kane is going to get a shot off. It's going to be loose in front of the net. Warren Fogle is going to bury the winner, and now Edmonton's up 2-1 in the series. But clearly, one overtime game wasn't enough because in game three, we're headed back to OT. This time around, we're in double overtime. Cody Ceci is getting a shot off. Derek Ryan's going to be burying the rebound. Who was this defenseman on Calgary? Clear the puck from in front of the net. Like, you just left it there for him. This goal shouldn't have happened, but it did, and we got to move on. The Calgary Flames are going to keep this series interesting as Elias Lindholm's going to be potting two in the third period to even the series. In game five, a Markstrom shutout's going to be putting Edmonton on the brink of elimination, and here we are in game six with Markstrom picking up another shutout, and the Calgary Flames, they're surviving another matchup as the Edmonton Oilers, they're going to be falling. So Edmonton, what happened to that elite offense you had? You're scoring like nine goals a game. I'm expecting you to get past this Calgary Flames team. The San Jose Sharks are next, and they're going to be taking their talents east. And for them heading east, they got to take on the Anaheim Ducks. Anaheim would have a 2 nothing lead hanging into the third period, but then for an answer from the San Jose Sharks is helping them take game one. And in game two, the teams are exchanging goals, so that means we're headed to overtime. In the final minutes of overtime, Comtois is going to get a shot off, but it's going to end up getting blocked. He's able to get another shot towards the net, and Jacob Soderberg, he's going to bury the loose rebound, and he's going to end this game. Of course, Anaheim has some elite defense and we're seeing that in game three as the San Jose Sharks are only going to score seven goals as they take a 2-1 series lead. But in game four, we're going to be headed back to overtime once again in a 1-1 tie. Halfway into overtime, Sturm's got the puck in the offensive zone. He's going to shoot a shot between Zutterland's legs and Zutterland's actually going to deflect this one to the back of the net and he's picking up the overtime winner. And although the San Jose Sharks have a 3-1 series lead, that doesn't mean anything because this Anaheim Ducks team knows how to fight back. They're taking game five, six to three, and then they're taking game six, three to one, and we're headed to game seven once again. This time around, game seven's not going to be needing overtime as San Jose is going to be picking up six goals and they're taking down the Anaheim Ducks. With that win from San Jose, they're slowly taking over the West Coast. After watching the Sharks claim the West Coast, we have to head over to the East Coast to see what the Carolina Hurricanes are up to. And with them heading south, they're just going to be claiming a free state. Next up's the New Jersey Devils as we're staying in the Metro Division. And with this team heading west, they're actually just going to be claiming a free state beside Washington. It's finally time for the Calgary Flames to go into attack and they're heading northeast, but that's just going to have them claiming Saskatchewan. We're down to our final two teams in the first round and the Philadelphia Flyers, they're going to be heading west. So that means they got to take on the Washington Capitals. TJ Oshie is going to help Washington take game one as he's going to score two goals within eight seconds. But in game two, we're going to have to head to overtime because it's tied 4-4. Five minutes into the extra frame, Dylan Strom is going to throw the puck towards the net. Somehow, Carter Hart's getting confused by the man in front. It's going to end up going in between his legs and Strom, he's picking up the OT winner here. In game three, Carter Hart has a chance to get his revenge in overtime because once again, it's tied 4-4 and we're heading back to OT once again. This time around, the Philadelphia Flyers are going to be coming out on top. Kevin Hayes is going to dish it out to Faraby. He's beaten Darcy Kemper and he's keeping Philly in this series. But that's not lasting for long. Washington's coming out on top in game five and then they're going to be finishing it off in game six in a 2-1 win. Although Washington might not own a ton of land here, they've actually taken quite a few teams territory so far. They've got Buffaloes, they've got Phillies, and they also have Pittsburgh. And the final spin of round number one, Boston's the only team left, so of course they got to make some moves. They're going to be taking their talents northwest, and that's actually just allowing them to claim a free state, so they're not doing too much. So I've put all the remaining teams back on a wheel, and Tampa Bay, they're going to be starting it off first. They're heading northwest, but that's just going to allow them to claim a free state. Heading over to the Western Conference, we have the Dallas Stars, who are going to be heading north, so that means they got to take on the Colorado Avalanche. A big third period from Dallas is helping them take game one, and in game two, they're going to be scoring six goals, and now they have a commanding 2-0 series lead. It should be no surprise the Avalanche are putting up a bit of a fight, as they're going to be taking game three, five to three, but Dallas, they just keep rolling, and Jason Robertson, he's going to score the lone third period goal, and he's putting Colorado on the brink of elimination. Colorado and Dallas are going to exchange goals throughout the entire game, but Nathan McKinnon, he's scoring the first goal, and he's also scoring the last, and Colorado's going to survive another day. But they're only going to be surviving one more day, because Jake Ottinger, he's making 34 saves on 35 shots, and Dallas, they're going to be eliminating the Colorado Avalanche. So that was a massive win for the Dallas Stars. Not only did they just claim a bunch of land, but they just took out one of the strongest teams in the game. It's time for us to have another Canadian matchup as the Ottawa Senators are up next. And with this team heading southwest, based on where the logo is, they're actually going to enter some New York Rangers territory. So now they got the Rangers to take on. And that's definitely not going to be an easy task for this team. The two new acquisitions are going to come up huge for the Rangers as they're helping them take game one. And then in game two, five on answer from the Rangers, they're going to help them take a 2 0 series lead. Nothing can stop the Rangers offense. They're going to be scoring six in game three. At Ottawa, they're on the brink of getting swept. Then in game four, now that's a tough way to go out. That's worse than St. Louis getting swept. Actually, I'm not really sure if it is. I mean, St. Louis got swept to the Chicago Blackhawks of all teams, but losing 8 0 in game four and getting swept, that's a real tough way to go out. I got nothing to say about that. We're going to stay in the Metro Division with the Carolina Hurricanes, and this team's going to be heading north, and that's just going to be a free state for them. The team that shall not be named is up next, and they're going to be taking their talents east, and that's going to have them matching up against the Columbus Blue Jackets. I think we all know why I'm not mentioning them.
between them. I'm still not too happy about what happened. Of course, for this series, I've jumped on the Columbus bandwagon, and that's working pretty well so far, as they're taking game one, two to one. In game two, Merzlikens is going to stand on his head. He's making 25 saves, and that's going to shut out the Chicago Blackhawks. Game three was definitely more high scoring, but with each team having four, we're going to be heading to overtime. In double overtime, Roslovic's going to find Jake Bean heading to the slot. He's going to work his way towards the net, and he's beating Mrazek, which is going to put Chicago on the brink of being swept. And I would love to see this team get swept. But sadly, the Chicago Blackhawks, they're not going to be getting swept. They're still in game four, six to one. But in game five, luckily, Columbus is going to seal the deal, and they're taking down the Chicago Blackhawks. Not going to lie, preying on the downfall of the Chicago Blackhawks is some Huey McHater stuff. If you know, you know. Sticking in the Eastern Conference, we have the New York Rangers up next, and they're going to be taking their towns west. And through them taking their towns west, that means they got to take on the Winnipeg Jets. Winnipeg's going to be opening the series in a 3-1 win, but the Rangers are going to be responding in game two with two goals, but Winnipeg's also scoring two, so that means we're headed to overtime. Early in double overtime, Pion's going to be sending a pass over to Kyle Connor, and from an absolutely horrible angle, he's somehow scoring this goal. No clue how Shesterkin's allowing that in, but now Winnipeg's up 2-0 in the series. And the Winnipeg Jets continue to roll. They're taking game three with six goals, and now the Rangers are pushed to the brink of elimination and the brink of getting swept. Before the Rangers get swept, though, they do want to head to overtime, and ironically, they're actually losing in overtime. So the New York Rangers just got swept by the Winnipeg Jets. What's with the Winnipeg Jets becoming a lead all of a sudden? In the past three videos, this team has been built different. Heading over to the Rangers' neighbor, we got the New York Islanders, and they're going to be taking their talents north, which means they got to take on the Winnipeg Jets now. The Winnipeg Jets refuse to stop as they're taking the Islanders down 4-2 in game one, and then they're going to shut them out in game two. Okay, what's going on? 7-3. They've won seven straight postseason games now. Playoff games, whatever you want to call this. We're heading into game four, and Winnipeg has the chance to sweep the Islanders. The Islanders are going to avoid getting swept as they're going to be potting three goals in the third period, but in game five, the Jets are going to come out on top once again because why wouldn't they? I don't know what's going on with this Winnipeg Jets team. I don't understand why they're the team to beat because look at all the teams that are left here. You have Boston, Carolina, Tampa, but nah, it's the Winnipeg Jets. Sticking in the Metro Division, the New Jersey Devils are up next, and they're taking their talents northwest. If they're heading northwest, they're going to have to take on the Washington Capitals. A 3-0 lead is going to be too much to overcome for the Devils as Washington is going to take game one, and then once again in game two, a 3-0 lead's too much, and Washington's now got a 2-0 series lead. The Devils are going to smoke Washington in game three, and they're going to keep themselves in the series, but then a 3-2 win from Washington is going to put the Devils on the brink of elimination. New Jersey's going to avoid falling in game five, but in game six, Washington's potting five, and they just can't respond from that, so the Devils, they're falling. I just want to point out, I think Washington owns like five or six teams territory right now. I think it's five. Look how little land they own, and then there's a team like Winnipeg, and they've only taken like four teams territory. So that's a massive difference, even though they're technically tied. And speaking of the Washington Capitals, they're up next and they're heading north. So now they're going to fight Winnipeg for all of their territory. So either Winnipeg stays strong and they continue to control the game, or Washington's going to become the new top dog. Game one's going all the way down to the wire, and Faravari, he's going to score with three seconds left in the game, and Washington's taking game one, and they're not looking back after that. Three goals in the third period is going to give them game two, and then a shutout in game three is putting the Jets on the brink of being swept. And in game four, the sweep's completed, Winnipeg's falling, and Washington, they now control the most land in the entire game. How did the Jets go from being one of the most elite? teams in the game to gain swept by Washington, like not even putting up a fight. It's a strange world we live in. We're staying in the Eastern Conference as the Columbus Blue Jackets are up next, and with this team heading west, they're just going to be claiming some more free land. It's about time a Western Conference team gets back in the mix, and the San Jose Sharks, they're up next. They're going to be heading directly east, but that's just a free state for them as well. The Calgary Flames are the lone Canadian team, and they're up next, and they're taking their towns directly east, and that means they got to take on the Washington Capitals. Nazem Kadri is going to be the hero in game one as he's picking up a hat trick to help Calgary steal the game. Washington's going to respond in game two, though, because they're potting six and then in game three, another shuttle from Kemper is giving Washington a 2-1 series lead. Calgary's offense is going to wake up once again in game four. They're scoring seven goals and the series is even once again. And Calgary, they're going to keep on pushing. They're winning 5-3 in game five and now Washington, they're on the brink of elimination. We already know this Capitals team, they're not folding. They're going to be taking game six and we got ourselves a game seven. And in game seven, the high power offense of Washington just won't stop. They're taking down the Calgary Flames and now the Washington Capitals own all of Canada, the most land in the entire game by far. This team just won't stop. Once again, the Boston Bruins are going to be our final team here. They're going to be heading northeast and somehow that's given them a free state as well. Boston has now survived two rounds and they've claimed two states and they own this little section right here. I mean, you could say the same thing about Tampa, like they don't own that much, but look at Boston. They're just by themselves right now. After resetting the wheel, San Jose is ready to make the first move and they're taking their talents northeast. Okay, I want to apologize if I've been saying they're taking their talents 9,000 times in this video. Like it just kind of clicked for me right now that I keep saying the exact same thing over and over and over. They're claiming a free state, but I would put a they're taking their talents to counter in the top right or something, but I couldn't be bothered to do that. I'm just going to keep the thousand. Sticking in the Western Conference, the Dallas Stars are up next and they're heading northwest and that means they're going to have to match up against the San Jose Sharks. Of course, we know San Jose just scores tons of goals as they're going to be picking up seven in game one to take an early lead in the series. 
Luckily, Dallas is responding in game two, though, to keep the series close. Once again, the Sharks' offense is lighting it up. They're scoring six goals, and they've got themselves the lead in the series once again. This team scored 21 goals through four games so far. I just wanted to point that out. That doesn't make any sense. And then in game five, San Jose is going to be closing the series out. 23 goals in five games, two in game five. How? Just how? So with that win, the San Jose Sharks continue to stay alive. I have no clue how this team's staying alive. It doesn't make any sense. Tampa Bay's the next team up, and they're going to head north, which is allowing them to claim a free state. The Washington Capitals, the team that owns the most lands attacking next, they're heading southwest, and now they're going to have one of their toughest matchups yet as they have to take on the Carolina Hurricanes. The goal scoring from Washington refuses to slow down as they're pot in six in game one to take it. And then in game two, they're going to score another five, which is giving them a 2-0 series lead. The Hurricanes and Capitals would exchange goals in game three, which is leading to overtime. And with Carolina on the power play. Washington's coming down shorthanded. Rasmus Sedin's getting a shot off. Nick Backstrom's crashed in net. He's burying the overtime winner and the Washington Capitals are now up 3-0 in the series. What is going on with this Washington Capitals team? So Carolina was about to finally steal a game away from Washington but then Nick Dowd's going to score with 40 seconds left in the game to force overtime. It doesn't matter what situation Washington's in, they're going to find a way to come out on top. Well maybe not in this game because they're actually going to be losing to the Carolina Hurricanes but they're still up 3-1 in the series and I highly doubt they're blowing that lead. For the third game in a row, we're going to be headed to overtime a 2-2 tie and early into the extra frame Kuznetsov's going to tee one up from the point but Tom Wilson he's going to deflect that one into the net for the overtime winner. The Washington Capitals have played the most games by any team by far and somehow they just keep finding ways to win games. It doesn't make sense to me but here we are in the final five and Washington looks unstoppable. There's one issue though the Boston Bruins are up next and they're basically surrounded by Washington territory so with them heading north they're going to take on the Capitals next. In game one Nick Baxham scoring the lone third period goal and that's helping Washington take game one but Boston's going to be able to respond in game two as they're going to even the series. The Capitals offense continues to fly as they're scoring five in game three. The Bruins are going to be shutting out the Caps in game four as this series is even once again. In game five, a 3-0 lead from the Capitals is going to be enough as they're going to push Boston to the brink of elimination, but game six is going to be head to overtime as Marchand's going to even the game with a power play goal. In the final seconds of double overtime, Krejci's going to send it over to Tyler Bertuzzi. He's going to be able to beat Darcy Kemper and now we got ourselves a game seven. And in game seven, the Washington Capitals are just burnt out. The Boston Bruins offense is too strong and they're going to be taking down the Capitals and now Boston owns all of this territory and they've only beat one team so far. With our final spin around number three, of course, it's landing on the Columbus Blue Jackets. And with them heading directly north, they got to take on the Boston Bruins who just claim 90% of the land. I don't think it's any surprise that Boston's going to be coming out on top in game one. But in game two, back-to-back -back goals from the Bruins is going to be forcing overtime. A little over halfway into our second overtime, McAvoy's going to take a slap shot from the point. Greer's going to deflect this one into the back of the net. And now the Boston Bruins have a 2-0 series lead. Columbus would be able to avoid falling to a 3-0 deficit with a 4-3 win in game three. But once again, in game four, we're headed back to overtime. There must be something with the Boston Bruins in double overtime time because here we are once again in double OT and Pasta he's going to dish that over to Bergeron who's going to bury the winner and now Boston's one game away from taking down the Columbus Blue Jackets but that overtime goal must have sparked something with Columbus they're scoring six goals in game five and then six again in game six so we got to head to game seven but in game seven the Boston Bruins they're going to be shutting down the Columbus Blue Jackets Allmark's picking up the shutout and the Blue Jackets are falling so with that loss we're down to our final three teams the San Jose Sharks the Boston Bruins the Tampa Bay Lightning one of these teams is not like the other I think it's pretty clear which one I'm talking about in our final round, the Boston Bruins are on the attack first, and they're going to be heading southwest. And based on that direction, because I know there's going to be people that argue saying, oh, well, technically they could have got the free space here, blah, blah, blah. Nah, they're heading into San Jose territory. We're going to get a matchup here. Now, I know there's these two open spaces here. By rights, I should have colored those in for Boston because they own all the land around it, so they technically should own those two as well. Basically, all I'm trying to say is they're taking on the Sharks. In game one, the Bruins are going to come up flying as they're going to score four goals. And then in game two, once again, the offense is sparking in their pot in five. It's built time San Jose's offense woke up and that's exactly what's happening in game three. They're going to avoid falling to a 3-0 deficit. But the Bruins are just too good. They're scoring five in game four. But in game five, San Jose continues to fight back and they're taking this one two to one. So they actually might have a chance at this. Nah, they don't have a chance. It's the Boston Bruins, let's be fair. They're easily the best team in the entire league. They're taking down the San Jose Sharks. And now we're down to our final two teams, the Boston Bruins, the Tampa Bay Lightning. I personally think this is going to be the best matchup. Two of the best teams matching up against each other, the perfect way to end it. Two third period goals from the Boston Bruins are going to help them take game one but in game two Tampa's responding to even the series with three goals after having a 3-0 lead early in the second period the Tampa Bay Lightning are completely falling apart Boston's going to score four straight and now they got a 2-1 series lead in game four goals are going to be exchanged the entire way and now we're headed to overtime halfway into overtime Charlie Coyle's picking up the puck he's going to find Zaka breaking away from a defender he's going to one time this one into the back of the net and the Boston Bruins are now one game away from hoisting the Stanley Cup but in order to beat the Tampa Bay Lightning they got to beat him one more time in overtime and that's exactly what's happening 
happening. Charlie McAvoy is going to keep the puck in the offensive zone. He's going to go for a bit of a skate. He's going to rip one towards Vasilevsky. But on the way there, Pass is getting a stick on that. He's deflecting that one into the back of the net. And the Boston Bruins, they're hoisting the greatest trophy of all time, the Stanley Cup and NHL playoff imperialism. It's good to see the best team winning. Unlike last time we did NHL imperialism, because the ending on that one definitely shouldn't have happened.